Hey, what's up, fellas? Last week we were taking a look at this here burner. This is the Rhino Refractor Recastable Combustion Chamber Burner, and it was able to run at extremely high powers on propane. And I said we'd take a look at this thing on waste oil, and when we did that, I noticed some problems that weren't completely observable during the propane test, which is kind of interesting. I need to remember that. Once again, we are pumping too much air. So I tried making some adjustments here, noticing that things just weren't optimal. And the inlet port on the back of this burner is essentially just a bit too big. And what that does is it turns the burner into an air horn, or other people may know it as an ejector, which is a type of air pump. You can see here we're capping out at right around 4.25 cubic foot per minute, or just under five cubic foot per minute there. And I know it can do more than this. I, I can just tell. Unfortunately, this camera is not capturing the true essence of this flame. It looks a lot better than that. Um, so right now we're stuck at around 53 horsepower. And I know we can do more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut it down and we're gonna put a restrictor plate on the back of this thing. But unlike NASCAR, this restrictor plate is going to increase the performance of the burner by allowing a higher velocity turbulence inside the combustion chamber. But the only way we can do that is to stop from blowing the entire fireball out of the combustion chamber. So this is how we do it. All right, so we're capping out at just over four cubic foot per minute, which means we were pumping too much air. So I went ahead and welded this restrictor plate on, and that's gonna reduce the effects of Brunelli's principle significantly. It's going to stop pumping too much air, and we should get another 40 kilowatts of power out of this thing. What's up, fellas? We've added the restrictor plate. We're going to see if we can get a higher fire out of this thing. I think the limit was like 4 cubic foot per minute or something like that, and it was running really nice at 2 cubic foot per minute. So we're going to try this again with the restrictor on there, see if we can get a higher power output. And we're just gonna let this thing run until it cracks apart. I'm waiting to see if we get a radial crack around that. The stainless steel fibers that I'm gonna make these things with are gonna mitigate that issue, but I still just wanna check a plain mold. All right, so I'm already liking what I see. You notice every once in a while we get a yellow flash of light in there. See how that, that light's flashing yellow now? Before, when you looked in that back hole, we could only see orange. We're at about 6.25 cubic foot per minute. And this thing is roaring like a rocket now. Even though the, flat, the camera still isn't picking up the flame, it still looks improved with my crappy iPhone camera. We're running at about 82 PSI's, I think it was. So, looking phenomenal. It's amazing that reducing the intake port diameter could have such a profound effect. So we did a fuel test and we came up with 132 horsepower. So we more than doubled our power by doing this, which is incredible. I'm very impressed with that. And look at that yellow ring around the discharge port. No carbon buildup. This thing's doing pretty good. Last time 922 was the max temp. So it's running at about 925, I think I seen. Nine so unfortunately, this camera is incapable of capturing the true likeness of the image of these flames. The frame rate of this camera is too slow. I'm thinking I'm going to try my GoPro at 120 frames per second. That's about the only way we're going to be able to observe the natural effects of this flame. It just it looks like such a floppy, lousy unpowerful flame but in, in person in real life it is a razor sharp needle flame there is no flopping around like you see on the video it's it's sharp as a pencil it's um unfortunate I'll, I'll try and get another shot down the road but next we're going to take a look at how i made some of these refractory castings 
I've got one right here. I've got one right here that I just pulled out. We'll take a look at how I made that. This is my first try at it, and I've got some improvements that need to be made. Definitely gonna have to vibrate this longer. You can see I got a hole right there on my seal. That bubble was just about out of there and I stopped vibrating the thing. All right, fellas, so far so good. This right here is a water cure going on, curing this refractory cement underwater. To get maximum strength, you do it for seven days. I'm not gonna wait that long. Let me go ahead and pull it out now, as a matter of fact. This is only two days. We're gonna get it out of there though and see what two days of a water cure does. It makes the concrete harder. All right, so here's the mold. Now all I gotta do is get this silicone out of there, the silicone carbide out of there. I need to do some silicone molds. <laughs> That's what I need to do. This ain't gonna work out too hot right here. All right, I just got lucky. It looks like that thing dropped. I think I'm gonna pull this off the fire and try and pull that out of there so it cures properly. All right, fellas, so this is my first run at this, at this process anyway. This was just done in a plastic jug and I didn't properly cure it. I got too busy to stay focused on this. And as a result, it cracked. This right here has been properly cured and was even submerged for two days to increase the strength even more. But there's some improvements to be made here. As you can tell, my vibration was not enough. I didn't want to get too much segregation which does happen if you over vibrate it. We got a lot of the aggregate down here. I need to just do small layers at a time, but um, there's definitely way more bubbles in this than I like, but it's okay. It's really not a problem. I did get two big bubbles right here on my seal where a plate will go on top. The paint did melt and allow this to slide out. Not an ideal situation, but I think I can try it again. I did bust this, trying to get it out of there, which is unfortunate. I don't think I'll be able to use that anymore for that. I was pounding on it with a wooden dowel rod. So, this is what we're gonna see next, guys. You can see how this thing does. I'm gonna make something similar to this. It's a lot lighter. This is way, way big and this thing was cracked when we started this. It was cracked when I took it out of the mold because I let it dry up. That's why I ended up letting this one just stay underwater completely. This is some really hard stuff. You hear that? That baby's got a ring to it. It does sound like some pottery. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire it up, get it hot, and at that point, something called the quartz inversion phase will take place and this refractory will be in its final state this is a refractory cement this is not your standard concrete i'm thinking about vitrifying the front of that with the oxyhydrogen torch so it doesn't absorb moisture i'm thinking about coating it with another coating i'm going to make a different recipe up this coating did okay but it's got some crazing. You can see there, that's what they call those little cracks. Which means I need some, some kaolin in there, some calcined kaolin mixed in. And that'll give us a little bit less cracking. So that's what I got, guys. I'm out of here. Now, these silicon carbide nozzles are superior to any concrete that I might have. The idea with this is it would be inserted into the sidewall of a kiln and cemented in place, basically. Wouldn't have to be, but that's kind of what, what these would do. 
I can't get these anymore. The world's falling apart. It's very difficult to get your hands on these. I got to spend thousands of dollars to get, you know, a crate of them. And the world's falling apart. That's just not possible right now. So I'm trying to make these things out of a refractory material and see what we can do. And I think I'm kind of liking this. This is not the final shape. I'm just messing around to discover problems in a process to develop a streamlined solution.